Welcome to Smart News Digital dated 4th October 2018. Today these are the articles which we are going to see in detail. The first article is No Sweeping Change on Swachh Bharat Mission. Following Mahatma Gandhi's vision of clean and healthy country, NDA government has initiated a flagship program of Swachh Bharat Mission. If you see, Mahatma Gandhi has found that there is a lack of social sanitation which is putting the country's demographic dividends under great threat. So following that, there is an evolution of sanitary programs. If you see that in 1986, the, the sanitation program started from the rural areas and as um, it is also the Gandhian principle of village reconstruction and rural sanitation. This 1999 program is again revitalized in the name of Nirmal Bharat Abhiyan in 2012 and again it was revamped by the current NDA government as Swachh Bharat Mission. This Swachh Bharat Mission aims to close the sanitation gap of nearly 60% of the rural population not having access to a toilet for which the mission has raised a fund of about 16,400 crores. If you see that the Swachh Bharat Mission's Gramin Wing has released the following statistics of they have constructed about 86.7 million individual household letterings that is the flushing letterings raised sanitation access to 94 percentage in the rural areas and more than 5 lakh villages are now declared as the open defecation free. Urban toilet coverage is now 87% of the target and nearly three-fourths of the wards in the country have door-to-door -door collection of the municipal waste. So these statistics are important in the mains point of view. Following are the objectives of the Swachh Bharat mission. The first and the foremost objective of this mission is to eradication of the manual scavenging and then is the, the conversion of the insanitary toilets to poor flushing toilets that is to replace the dry latrines to flushed latrines. And the third being creating awareness among the citizens regarding the health issues due to inadequate sanitation. Fourth is to create water pipelines for that is laying of water pipelines in the villages and thereby ensuring the Gandhian principle of village reconstruction. And the fifth being collection, processing and proper disposal of the municipal solid waste. And the sixth being eliminate open defecation that is the open defecation free status. These are the goals of the flagship program of Swachh Bharat Mission. However, all is not well with this program. The outcomes shows that achieving social change is far from easy. Every society will resist change that is clearly visible in this program also. In some states such as Rajasthan, independent verification shows that that social change that is the SBM hopes to achieve remains elusive. Besides this, a hard truth and a sad fact is manually the traditionally oppressed communities continue to remove filth from the dry latrines used by the upper caste. This is a societal issue this and is against Gandhian view of creating an equal society and abolishing untouchability. And similar reports have also stated that UP and Madhya Pradesh too have these problems which is putting human dignity under threat. There are also present some challenging headwinds. The first one is loss on the municipal solid waste, protection of water resources and pollution control are just not being enforced. Though laws are formed uh, periodically, it is not properly implemented. And this is because there is a lack of official machinery to enforce these laws vigorously and the third issue is that the infrastructures are inadequate to manage the waste scientifically you can see that india is witnessing rapid urbanization and thereby leading to a lot of waste generation the statistical data regarding the waste generation is about 1.3 lakh tons of waste approximately per day and among which only 90,000 of the waste is approximately 
collected and among that only 25,000 tons of waste are regularly processed and disposed in a scientific way. So what is the way forward to make this mission successful is that it should have a broader vision of what constitutes cleanliness apart from just saying about the sanitation. Besides ending manual scavenging, the Swachh Bharat mission must also ensure that the manual cleaning of septic tanks is, should be stopped and the, the funds for rehabilitation to them should also be properly addressed. The second article is the scope of the constitutional morality. Even after 70 years of Indian independence, the constitutional right of Article 17, that is the abolition of untouchability in all its form, remains unrealized. The issue of the rights of the sweepers and scavengers have never entered into the mainstream legal consciousness in India today. This shows that there is a governmental lawlessness present in the country. If you see that the socio-economic caste census data of 2011, about 1.85 lakh rural households are dependent on manual scavenging as their source of primary income. And this is extremely stigmatizing and violently exploitative and degrading form of forced labor by the government and the civil society. Also, there has been a steady increase in the deaths of conservancy workers. That is, the data also says that about one person in every five days are dying due to the manual scavenging. Dr. Ambedkar says that the constitutional morality may be traced to the strength of anti-caste resistance and abolition of untouchability. That is, when only when India is freed from the caste inequalities and practice of untouchability, the constitutional morality of the constitution will be enshrined. Also, given the urgency with the people dying daily, despite constitutional and statutory protections, we have to set the course for the future for which the government should have to proactively take some following measures. The first aspect is the importance of the judicial empathy. If you see in the Nas Foundation vs NCT Delhi case in 2009, the Supreme Court has reaffirmed the rights of the LGBTQ community by decriminalizing the section 377. So doing that, why the court is still remaining silent to provide justice for these marginalized communities whose privacy is under great threat. The government must act on the meanings and expressions of intrinsic dignity of these manual scavengers and Safai Karamcharis which is enshrined in articles 21, 15 as well as in 17. The outgoing Chief Justice of India Deepak Mishra also uh, outlaid the four cardinal corners of the constitution as individual autonomy, liberty, equality and recognition of identity with dignity and right to privacy thereby we have to fulfill the equality justice fraternity liberty that has been enshrined in the preamble of our constitution the principle of non-retrogression in the matter of fundamental rights has now been equally stated so it is that we must remove the contradictions at the earliest possible or else those who suffer from inequality will blow up the structure of political democracy which is accorded as the basic structure of the constitution as stated in the Kesavanandi Bharati case judgment. The third article is the creamy layer of social justice. As the citizens of India, we expect any Supreme Court judgment should have the two certainties. The first one is it should adhere to the constitution of India and then second is it should end the governance getting paralyzed. If you see in the Journal Singh vs. Lakshmi Narayan Gupta case, the reservation for SC and ST in promotions, the government hereafter no need to collect the quantifiable data to demonstrate the backwardness of the public employees. By ruling this, the court set aside the requirement that was stipulated in the Naharaj case of 2006 by saying that it is contradicting of Indra Sani case of 1990 that says creamy layer has no relevance in the context of ST and STs.
their ultimate aim of reservation to backward classes is to bring an inclusive development so the SCs and STs are given job reservations not because or they are poor but because they are excluded so based on the recent judgment can one now treat the matter as settled or that the creamy layer is a non-issue with regard to the job reservation is a question but it is not so the court reasoned that the creamy layer test would be consistent with the equality principle also in the constitution of article 335 the first part stipulates that the job reservations for SEs and STs are just a right of representation and not as a welfare measure but in the second part of the article 355 it states that the requires maintaining the efficiency of the administration the creamy layer concept should be followed among the SEs and STs also what is also not appreciated is that the presence of the creamy layer works as a safety valve. The rationale behind the litigation which demands to prohibit elite or privileged sections from accessing quota post is because they are well qualified as that of the general candidates. They should be subjected to the creamy layer concept to ensure social justice. Also this would corner a substantial number of open posts for which the less privileged Will, would fill the quota among the SE and STs. The Indian state must be proud that its policies have created a creamy layer concept among the most disadvantaged that gel with those in the general category. They also helps in projecting the community as a normal Indians which is a, obviously a revolutionary ideal. So and the whole enterprise of seeking to introduce challenges before the, their promotions and employment opportunities will have a pernicious consequences. So will it do any good if the government recruits general candidates from, for, from the elite sections and the reserved candidates from the poorer strata? Definitely not. Yes, if you see that today's creamy layer is just yesterday's underprivileged. So in now, as of now, India badly needs a period of bending neglect in matters related to caste as well as constitutional provisions. Now the fourth article is in harmony with Mother Nature, authored by our Indian Prime Minister Modi ji. The United Nations honored Prime Minister with the Champions of the Earth Award which should be noted for the prelims point of view. So this honorable award is a recognition of the Indian culture and values which have always emphasized to have a harmony living with the mother nature. But due to the imbalances between our greed and necessities that have caused to that have led to a grave ecological imbalances our human society stands at an important crossroads so it is the responsibility of the younger generation to take the concern seriously and act proactively so our prime minister also suggested some positive changes that could be brought by the society uh, the first being is the internal consciousness that is the respect for nature is at the core of the India's traditions. You can see that in Atharva Veta uh, under uh, Prithvik Shukta it contained a parallel, unparalleled knowledge about nature and environment. Our father of our nation Mahatma Gandhi also proposes that the resources of our mother nature is to satisfy everyone's need but not to the greed of the. Gandhi also propounded the doctrine of trusteeship based on which it is the responsibility of the younger generation to ensure our clean planet. He also called for a sustainable consumption so that the world does not face a resource crunch. This says that the uh, resources of the earth is to satisfy the needs of the people but not the greeds of the individuals. The second aspect he suggests is to have a public awareness. For that we have to talk, write, debate, discuss and deliberate about the environmental issues to have a proper solution. At the same time it is vital to encourage the research and innovation on subjects related to the climate change. This is when more people will know about the pressing challenges of our times and ways to mitigate them. The third aspect 
he suggests is the proactiveness of the younger generation not only younger generation the society as a whole we see this proactiveness in the swachh bharat mission which is directly linked to the sustainable future and in the success of ujwala yojana and some more flagship programs of the current nda government also he boasts that the integrated objectives of the skill india in the environment sector by the name of green skill development programs through which 7 million youths are trained to have an awareness about the climate change he also calls for climate justice climate justice in the sense safeguarding the rights and interest of the poor and marginalized sections who are the most vulnerable people in the society so it is up to us to take on the mantle of the global responsibility towards a sustainable future the fifth article is more liquidity for lending in this article we have to note what is statutory liquidity ratio and the cash reserve ratio and the liquidity coverage ratio these are important for the prelims point of view if you see what is statutory liquidity ratio means that the commercial banks are supposed to hold a stipulated form of uh, uh, reserves which may be government bonds gold and similar liquid assets as proposed by the RBI and the cash reserve ratio is also similar to statutory liquidity ratio but the difference is in this the banks or need to hold in the form of cash with RBI and the liquidity coverage ratio means the highly liquid assets which can be easily converted into cash that banks are required to hold so why it is in news the rbi last week allowed banks to classify the additional 2% of the value of their slr investments in government bonds as high quality liquid assets so note this high quality liquid assets for the prelims point of view also this latest easing of slr norms by the rbi can release 2.5 lakh crore into the economy to boost the economy the decision to reclassify the slr assets is is part of the rbi's emergency measures to improve the availability liquidity in the economy so can this measure solve the liquidity crisis definitely yes because the injection of fresh money through the banking system can definitely boost the aggregate demand in the economy however it remains to be seen whether banks are willing to risk lending money to nbfcs and other financial companies in the current environment only then the economy can be boosted because the NC nbfcs constitutes major lending for the non formal sectors now the sixth article is united nations urges india not to deport seven rohingyas India being following the tradition of Atithi Devo Bhava it is decided to deport the seven Rohingya Muslims stating them as the illegal immigrants backing this the united nation bodies urged the indian government to refrain from doing such things it, because it would violate un principles of refoulement so this principle is very important as the act is forcibly returning of refugees or asylum seekers to a country where they are liable to be subjected to persecution the un high commissioner for refugees also expressed his views that the current conditions in rakhine state in myanmar are not conducive for safe dignified and sustainable return for rohingyas so it is not only the article 21 that is right to dignified life is given for the uh, indian citizens but it also be satisfied for the other foreigners too the seventh article is gujarat acts to save its pride here i would like to recall that the asiatic lions is only present in the gir region of the gujarat and stated it as a protected areas in asia due to its supported species as of now the status of lion according to iucn is it is in a endangered position having this 23 lions have died since september at the sanctuary because of a canine distemper virus infection while 17 died of the baby seosis protozoa infection that is spreading through ticks so the reason for the deaths of the other two tigers is yet to be ascertained 
as per a 2015 count there were 523 lions in the gir forest and also in the revenue areas so to control this rapid death of the lions the gujarat government has now sprung into action and launched not only the rescue efforts but also called for experts from outside to take this concern into consideration the eighth article is the genes of the famed tiger matchly to be mapped as per iucn list the tigers are classified into the endangered species so this matchly tigress is a very significant because it is having a fish like marks on her face and also known as t16 a team of geneticists conservation biologists are in the process of preparing a genetic map for from matchly's dna from this genetic map it can be taken as a template or reference genome for comparing the genes of tigers present anywhere because india is one of the most important tiger range countries holding about approximately 2200 of the tiger species so far the reference genome that's used to study the tiger genes is used from the siberian tiger named amur that has been sequenced in 2013 so this is the first time an indian tiger genes have been decoded for reference genome purposes now the last article is forgo s400 system us tells india s400 is an air defense missile system developed by russia and it is an upgraded version of s300 series which is a surface to air missile systems so us administration has warned india to not to undergo this deal with russia as it may attract sanctions from the us administration the us administration justifies this through its countering america's adversaries through sanctions act or katsa act to impose sanctions on any country that has significant transactions with iran north korea or russia only the us president has the power to waive these transactions for specific countries and for specific transactions the us has warned india that it should not expect an automatic waiver if it goes ahead with the purchase from russia thank you